good? Everybody good? Good, good, good. Good, good, good. All right. So uh, welcome all to the um, Sunderland Elementary School Committee meeting for June 19th, uh, 2017. And uh, we will uh, uh, start tonight. Um, Oh, first of all, before I get into reorganization and potentially give up the, the mic, oh. I want to say congratulations to Principal Barshevsky. Thank on you. On the arrival of his second daughter. Mm -hmm. um, name, wait. Ava. 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 May 31st. All right. Yeah. Exciting. Um, and, um, and yeah, you are looking remarkably well under the circumstances. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah. So you look tired at all. Impressive. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, the uh, first real order of business uh, is reorganization. So I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Harry. May I take nominations for chair of the Sunderland School Committee, please? Any uh, nominations? I should say I both am willing and also happy to step aside if somebody else would like some time, experience, whatever, doing it, so. I think Keith's ready. But, um. <laughs> I'll nominate Doug Fulton. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll second. second. Thank you. All in, the, uh, all in favor? Thank you. Doug, congratulations. You can take over from here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can, can I have a list of the other <laughs> <laughs> offices that I have to take nominations? <laughs> yep. As long as you give it back. <laughs> and I need the, the names are the first and then the second. Okay. Um, okay. So that, yeah. Oh, I can write it here. Don't worry. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, vice chairman is currently uh, previous was uh, Greg Gottschalk. I think he's doing a great job. I agree. Uh, I'll nominate Greg for vice chair. I'll second. Um, all right. Any others? All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Unanimous for Greg. Congratulations, Greg, if you're watching this <laughs> <laughs> on your phone from some meeting somewhere. <laughs> uh, all right, Secretary, currently Maisie Shaw. I think she's doing a great job. <laughs> I will, I'll nominate Maisie. Second. You good, Maisie? Yeah. That's all right. Um, <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Unanimous. Frontier representative, currently Keith McFarland. I'm happy to continue. Yeah. I'll nominate Keith. Second. Okay. So T Doug and Michelle. Uh, yeah. Or Michelle yeah, Michelle Doug. Yep. Yeah. All right. And the other ones are assigned, not voted. Oh, the other ones I signed. Okay. So all in favor of the uh, Frontier Rep? Aye. Yeah. All right. I got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. And so then I'll, I'll work on appointing the other ones. Okay. Well, you have to do it tonight. Oh, I have to do it tonight. Uh, um, okay. We can do it. Yeah. Um, so our union reps currently are um, myself, Greg, and Michelle. Um, does that still work? Michelle, you still? I didn't actually get to make it to anything this year because <laughs> I was so busy because business is yep. doing well, which is a good thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I can certainly try Game to make it. Game for it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you're thinking as you're getting it closer, if not, and I, again, I don't know if Nazi would want to do that. Or not, but if it's, if it, you know, if you're thinking, oh, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do it, we can look for another. Um, Otherwise, we lose the vote. Right, right. It's, the, is, it's the Union 38 voting member. Right. So when you all come together in October and April, right. Right. Those, you, are, you have a vote in that. Um, okay. Okay. So we want to have the votes there representing us. Right. So, right. Um, and I think our first, it'll be October, will be the first joint meeting. 
And I can I can reappoint to this position, okay. correct? I don't know about that. Like once the meeting, you know, like how I far? I don't know ahead. if we could if it, if she can't make the October meeting and there's a lot of business and you wanted to reappoint Greg. I don't know. I don't know the rules on Greg's that. on it. Like, it would be no. so that I'd, I'd appoint probably Maisie. Maisie, right? Because Keith's already got on the frontier. Right. Yeah. Um, well, Keith could vote twice too. It's true. You could be on both. You could be on right. frontier. Right. So who's on it right now? The past. Um, me, Greg, and you. Okay. Yeah. So if I you want to, so much. Huh? I miss so much this year. Yeah. Well, if you want to go for it, go for it. But let me know if you're looking getting into September. Right. And it's looking more busy. Yeah. Let's let's okay. let's shift it. Yeah, I mean, we know the dates, so yeah, I can always work around them now okay. that I know them. Okay. And um, Maisie, yeah. school council? Yeah. I oh. Okay. Um, collaborative <laughs> um, is the last one. Um, I wonder if, I mean, collaborative is another talk because that's another meeting every other month um right which that's tough yeah do you want me to talk to greg sure or, in, or i don't know i i'll talk i might keep you there for the moment but all right then i'll talk with other folks and see if anybody else would yeah for taking it okay okay is there a collaborative schedule that we can look at or do they just so okay I believe they, it, like that us, would be it would come out. Much right easier to face right, it. Right, have it in the calendar. Yeah, because okay. the calendar is just nuts. Okay. But, okay. as long as I, if it's like out in front of me like this, I can okay. just put it in my planner. Okay. And then I just don't book anything else on those days. Okay. Um, let me. Ooh. Okay. That's going to be a lot of there. Thank you so much, Dad. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. Beautiful. Uh, Behind you? Not yet. I have two email addresses, so some kind of stuff. All right. You're in there. Okay. Uh, next okay. is um, review and approve the minutes. From yeah. From May 16. Forward, that's me. Thank you. Um, so any well motion regarding the minutes from May six the May meeting? Yeah, I'll move to approve the minutes. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Yeah. Nice. Um, and then uh, financial statements. Good evening. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't get this out in the mail to you, uh, but I've been gone since last Wednesday. Just got back today, so I just thought I'd bring it rather yeah. than, yeah. than yeah. email it to you. Um, <clears throat> so right now we're showing on page six that we have $70,009.83. So when I deduct this tonight's warrant, and then what I'm estimating will come in after tonight's meeting, we have about $25,438 available for year-end spending. And the two things we have to take care of first are the bad debt and the loss for the uh, school cafeteria. And I'll get into the loss in a few minutes um, because I did bring you the financials for the school lunch. But right now it's looking about $3,940. And our bad debt, or I don't want to say bad debt, our unpaid lunch bills right now are high at $5,192. I've never seen it this high in my five years here. Um, so we've got to take care of those two items, which would leave us approximately $16,306. And of that, uh, our recommendations would be to use between five dollars and $7,000 to put Meals Plus in here. And what Meals Plus will do is will automate our cafeteria system so that we're not counting lunches and recording payments by hand anymore. And I think it'll go a long way in helping us reduce those unpaid lunch balances. Um, 
So that would be my recommendation, and it's going to fluctuate depending on how many terminals. If we have to do any electrical work in the in the in the, in the kitchen to get the uh, computers up and running, um, which then um, Mr. Barshevsky and I had a conversation. What he would like to do with any remaining funds is to replace the blinds in the office area. Is that the area? The back classrooms. The back classrooms. Um, the building. And, and also doing any painting or miscellaneous wall repairs that have uh, that we need to address and that would take care of uh, um, you know most of the available funding um, and on another note we do um, we are showing some savings in on page seven that will have an additional um, thirty eight thousand dollars that we didn't use in school choice um, so that we've got some savings there and that that's good news because um, we wouldn't, we were not going to have to do the bad debt or the cal, uh, the salaries out of here, which we normally do every year. There was enough money uh, in the cafeteria fund to pay for the uh, cafeteria manager and the part-time worker we get from Frontier. So we're ha we do have a savings um, in the uh, the lunch account. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the school choice. Uh, and those numbers, uh, the actuals for this year, should be coming out any day now from Desi. Uh, so at, at this point, so this was so these are where we spent less on on teachers, or just less out of choice than expected. Less out of choice because because of teacher salaries. So we had more in the but we were able with every summer we go through this little we've mm -hmm. got IAs that leave and IAs that mm -hmm, came in. Mm -hmm. So any savings that we had from the change of staffing in the yeah. IAs, we put more salaries back on the general budget and and used less of school That's choice. Yep. Um, so yep. okay. that way we've got a little okay. savings and we don't have to use those funds to pay for the bad debt this year and or the cafeteria manager salary, which we've been doing in the past right. couple of years. Right, right. Okay. And so so that just stays in the school choice. Fund. Correct. And we'll so run it gives over. us a little cushion. Better cushion than we were looking for. E absolutely. So um, that makes me feel um, a little bit more comfortable. And so we were anticipating that to be at zero? Yes. Zero. To spending it down. Right. Yes. Um, well, we were anticipating not the not the school choice thing being totally at zero, right? No, no, no. no, no, no. But the so what, our, from that budget, what we were we expected to spend, what we initially set out coming from school choice, correct. and we're spending thirty eight thousand less. less. So that gives us more of a cushion for yep. FY eighteen. Right, right, should right, anything right. pop up, right? That puts it builds up our like cushion. In, uh, Seventy the, something to eighty, right. seventy five to eighty thousand. Which, as we know, as opposed to thirty eight or whatever it was going to be. We get a lot of move-ins in the summer, and we did, we never know what to, what children are going to appear yeah. on our doorstep yeah. no, over good. the summer. So that gives us a little bit. Um, so before I move on to the um, the the lunch um, numbers, we've I've been usually you guys you know I, I don't know if it's a formal vote, but you at least approve what Ben and I um, and Dr. Carey are proposing for year-end money spend expenditures. So. Sorry to say that, Lauren. Usually you guys vote to oh. approve what oh. we're recommending, oh, okay. and then whatever's available, we keep spending down. Right, okay. So just, you know, take a vote that you approve that we would use in the priority order would be the school, any school lunch, bad debt, mm -hmm. um, or loss, and then the meals plus, and then blinds, and then miscellaneous wall repairs and painting. So the one, the, one question I have is about the, the, the meals plus thing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, I mean, I guess how much, how much of the, you know, because that you, you're saying that we, could help us not have accumulate as much. Correct. Bad debt, effectively. Because we can the, build more. We lunch. can build. We can build weekly. Right, right, right. Can parents get on and look and see? Not yet, but see, this is this would be the first step for parents to get on, and then us talking with the town and seeing if parents could make online payments. So if we don't have a computer system, we can't even start down that down that path. So this is the first step, and you are the second largest. Um, Mm -hmm. elementary school and it, your numbers are so big it's getting very yep. cumbersome to, to keep trying to do this manually yep I mean this is go ahead oh, just so um, how would the kids pay for it do they have a card and there would be a card to be swiped or well, how does these the are things work? we're going to work on uh, over the summer um, Deerfield right now Frontier uses it Deerfield uses it Waitley's approved us purchasing it Conway approved, approved us purchasing it um, so this will get all five schools up and running on this um, 
at at Deerfield, we have a woman that stands there and she knows the kids. So, and they, they do it by class. So she can pull up the class and she makes sure that the meal makes all the components and then she pushes the child's number on the thing. Other school districts I've been in, we've used swipe cards or Scott likes this button technology. And so the, when the kids go down to lunch, the teachers would give them their tickets. The lady at the register would collect the tickets, um, the swipe cards, and then give them back to the homeroom teacher the next day. So these are all logistical things that we would work out with, the, with Ben, the teaching staff, and the cafeteria staff as to how we would go about doing this. And then the parents are putting uh, money into their accounts? That would be the second step. Our first year, we want to get it up and running. Then we'd start having conversations with the town to see if they'd allow us to do online payments with this. And then, so the idea that we can eliminate the bad debt or the savings uh, uh, is... We would, we would lower, the bad, lower the bad debt, and then we would all, I don't want to keep saying bad debt, we're outstanding well, how would we, I guess, yeah. <laughs> what, What's the mechanism by which we would eliminate um, losing money? Uh, simply because we could I, we could send the bills because it's electronic we could send the bills home every Friday because and now what, we have to do it by hand we do it by hand and we do it once a month okay. so by the, and if you've got multiple children I get you know Ben's been trying to make phone calls uh, Deb Zemnowski does a great, good job collecting but then parents want to know well when did my kid eat I sent them with a lunch because we don't have our policy is to feed anybody that gets in line so even if a parent's sending their kid with lunch the child throws it away he eats it on the bus and he gets in line and takes a lunch and then the parent wants to know well why are you feeding my child i send a lunch we'd be able to catch that much sooner than a month into the school year mm -hmm. and what's happening here is not only do we serve lunch but we serve breakfast so some kids are getting in line two times a day yeah. and mom and dad don't know that mm -hmm. until the bill goes home yeah and then it, would there be any carryover to Frontier if it's all an integrated system maybe that they don't have to do the setup? Once Correct. They get there? We could do, like right now, if we had sixth graders with balances, we'd be issuing refund checks. And I need to talk with um, Scott Paul to say, if a sixth grader has a balance, can we then transfer that over? And I don't know how that would work because it's physical, it's, it's physical money. It's, right. I mean, yes, we could change the balance, but then how do I get the cash? I would write one check to Frontier rather than two or three checks to parents. The other thing we do is if we have sixth graders with balances and they have younger siblings, we transfer it down. Mm -hmm. So the program, not only you know keeping accurate um, track of what you know when they ate and if it was a lunch or a breakfast, but it also generates these bills every every week. You can generate them as often as you want, and it's not all done by hand, so that it will it will just make the job more efficient. So we're buying the software this year. The software and the computer terminal and the touch screens and the reason it fluctuates between and you have to buy a license um, and then you have to buy you know the maintenance so um, and then Scott throws extra money in there because we don't know if there's outlets in there or do we have to drop a cable in there so there could be some electrical work that goes around along with it. I anticipated the, not the electrical the part the license part we anticipated the question is there like. An anticipated ongoing yes, licensing? Yes, there'll be a fee every year. Do we have a ballpark? For I think it's about $1,000 a year. But our, our outstanding lunch balance is $5,000. If, if we got it down even to four, it kind of mm -hmm. pays for itself yeah. every year. Has this gone to, or have you talked to the staff in the cafeteria about possibly doing this for next year and then is there any kind of training that they would have to do to be prepared they would be trained in the summer we might call them in a day or two early mm -hmm. um, than we currently do to do a, a little bit of training essentially it's not that much different for them yeah. at, at the, the cashier thing it's it's all the the paperwork and all of that stuff that's alleviated because the computer's doing it Just gonna... And I think the other added feature that's really a plus is it really keeps our children who are free and reduced, it keeps that more private mm -hmm. because we're, we're just pushing buttons and it, there, nobody brings cash to the register until you get right. to Frontier. So now this really, no one will know except the computer mm -hmm. who's free and reduced and will generate that. So we're, we're protecting our children's privacy as well. And so ultimately, what seems to be driving it is the kids going in and getting meals unbeknownst to parents. Correct. So this system will be able to generate weekly notifications, increasing the amount of communication going home to parents That's so that correct. we can try to, that was a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, can you point out exactly where the, the, the savings was coming from? I didn't follow the, the 20,000 and then there's 30. What, what lines the savings yeah. come? I, I, did, I haven't analyzed it that close okay. yet. I'm, I'm just looking at my bottom line. I subtracted what we've got, what you're signing tonight for warrants, what I think will trickle in between now and, and June 30th for the rest of June's bills. And then I just, I, I'm just i just using estimates right okay. now. What was, where would I find the, I mean, that, that's what you're mentioning about the school choice? And, um, that's on page seven. So if you look on the far right column where it says budget balance on the bottom line, it says 37,699.90. Mm -hmm. that's, that's savings that we didn't spend out. Okay. So, and like I said, whenever we had salary savings, I would move the salary over to the general budget so that we weren't using all our school choice because I knew we were gonna be tight. Yep. So one other question was um, in terms of, because uh, we've taken some out of supplies uh, to, to meet with their the, the request from the select board mm -hmm. um, after the failed override. We do, is there any of that that we'd want to put back or is that? So that's a good question and I did forget because I didn't attend Friday's night meeting. We did we did reduce our budget so we'd also be looking for permission for Ben to use some of these savings in school choice to buy those supplies. Okay. okay. Thank you for reminding me, Mr. Fulton. It goes both ways, right? <laughs> you remind me all the time. So uh, yep. Okay, good. I just so if you guys want, to, like, if someone would like a motion to say that they approve of the priorities for end of year spending. I will make a motion to approve the end of year spending. As prioritized by administration. As prioritized, but just to review, they are. Meal, uh, any school outstanding debt and bad debt for lunch. Meals plus for the cafeteria lines for the back classrooms and any miscellaneous wall and repair and painting as um, as much as we can get them with the money. Okay. What she said. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Okay. Any additional discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. And um, before we move on to the school lunch, you do have nine warrants tonight, totaling $44,990.94. Um, so now if you look at this, uh, this was this page here. This is our school lunch program through May. <clears throat> and as you can see right now, we have a deficit of $3,940.28. I do foresee that getting a little bit smaller in June because usually in June we're not we're not purchasing we're just our menus are dri driving down our inventory, um, so I don't see it being jumping up or you know going down too much. It'll probably hit right around there. Um, the second page gives us our statistics, and um, what I think is important to point out here is that if you look along the bottom, the last thing, the average daily participation, we're hovering at about you know 50%, 54%, 55%. So our participation is low. Um, and so that doesn't help when the participation is low and then you're not collecting your funds. What, what do the participation levels say at the other three elementary schools look like? They fluctuate, but we all hover right around this level. Okay. So the 55%-ish the, the is not uh, unique to us, it's... Right. Okay. The, but Desi likes to see 75, 80%, and we're a long way from that. Mm -hmm. Do uh, surrounding rural districts fall into that, or is that more like a, an urban... Uh, well, in the urbans, we, you know, um, when I was in an urban setting, I mean, we were 90% free right. and reduced, so the participation was there. Right, right. Um, but we're going to be working um, this year in order to get our participation up. We are, um, we hired a, a consultant um, to come in and take a look at all our lunch programs, all five schools. Um, and we used, um, we had planned in our central office budget to add a module to the Infinite Visions, and we've pushed that off because we thought it was more important to hire the food consultant. So this is already paid for from the five schools. And um, they're gonna give us recommendations to get our participation up. And what that's gonna look like is better menus 
and uh, better presentation of the food. Uh, we need to do some training with our staff as to uh, cutting techniques and how to, you know, because kids are visual eaters, as most of us are, um, to make it look really uh, appetizing to children. We have a new food service uh, manager over in Deerfield, and um, since she's been here in January, her participation keeps going up, up, up. And she's doing some really interesting things like making homemade hummus. And she's making um, things like ants on a log, which is celery stuffed with sun butter and a couple raisins on it. But the kids love it because they think they're eating ants on a log. So we need that, those types of marketing um, tools and uh, presentation. And we're going to get recommendations from this consultant on how to get our participation up. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Because I, I wonder too, like, um, if uh, if there's, I don't know if there is any of this currently, but but like integration of classroom learning with the food <laughs> the dining in the cafeteria because like I know uh, years ago my kids were doing after school um, and there was uh, one of the specials in that was a cooking thing and they ate all kinds of things that we could never get them to eat at home because they participated in the process and making it and, and, and making the menu and blah, 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 blah. And um, so I realized we're not going to have our, the kids like take over the, the menu and everything to give it to your butt, like some, where there was something like that that could get them bought in more to like wanting to eat in there. I mean, eat, not, you know, eat the, the food from the cafeteria. Not, not um, this school year, but uh, the one before, we actually did a survey across all the grade levels um, yeah. to get feedback from the kids at, about which meals um, they yeah. wanted right. to see in the cafeteria. Right. So we but, have those results. Um, but by default, they're going right. to be like, oh, you know, steak. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Steak. Chicken nuggets every yeah. day. Yeah. Every day I want the French toast every day. You know, <laughs> not necessarily. Right. Well, they did also with, listed some I'm things sure they right. necessarily served here. But then there's the manageable part of what can we oh, actually right. bring in, right. you know, to so one of the prior school districts I was in, what we did, we worked with our with our teaching staff, and I know it's hard because there's just so much the teachers have to do. Um, but there, I don't know if at the elementary level we do have a health component. But what we did was we had a contest of who could submit uh, menu ideas mm -hmm. that were healthy, yeah. and how do you make them healthy? Right. Um, and then we'd have a contest winner. But we had also a corporate sponsor that ran the kitchens, so. It, it's just it's tough because we're so tiny and it's yeah yeah and their day, the teachers days are already loaded. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the consultant you're talking about is, are they looking purely at how to increase uh, participation or are there other things? So that you're looking at the total. At the when when are you expecting? When are they supposed to give the report? Um, sometime this summer. So he. So it's uh, already been going on. Yes. So, okay. so um, Frontier Conway. I think Deerfield and Waitley, I think Sunderland were coming. Oh, I don't want to say when we're coming. Um, but it's supposed to be sometime this summer. So we're it's it's be, been ongoing report to come as opposed to it's going to start and the report will be next year. We're going to start the changes. We're expecting the report sometime this summer. We're going to start implementing the changes to get ready for September. Okay. So the other thing, too, that we have to look at, when I look at, um, if you go up, up, up one block above the gray line, the, co the total cost and the cost per meal, going across $4.73, $3.25, $3.45, one But if you look up, the most we ever get for a meal is three seventy-five, and that's if an adult is. So our costs are over what we're actually bringing in. So that's problematic, too. Um, and what we've already seen I is, okay, so right in this. I saw the cost per meal line, but then you Okay, so go up here where it says full price meal, we get $3.17 per meal. Um, revenue per reduced price, they give us $3.28, $3.28 for a free lunch, mm -hmm. $3.75 for an adult meal, and we average about $3.28 for a la carte items. Yeah. So um, we're, not, we're not covering our costs. And what we find is that we're labor heavy. So that's one of the things that we're really looking at. Uh, some of our schools, you have, to have, you, ha you, have a, you have to have a minimum of two people on the line. And, in, in our, and that's not such an issue here. But it's an issue in the other schools. There's only 100 kids. 
and I still have to have two people on the line regardless. So we're going to be looking at that because most of, our, um, most of the analysis is showing that our food costs are in line. So if we want to get our participation up, maybe our food costs have to go up so that we're not, you know, we may be buying a better quality chicken nugget. Um, and then some of the labor costs will have to go down. And those are the things that people that are industry experts are looking at for us to tell us. So recently there were new guidelines issued at the federal level mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, what can be part of the lunch program. Correct. Um, so how is that impacting us? Because it, from my understanding, it's making the meals less, less healthy. It, so yeah. I had a conversation with Dr. Carey, and we also had a conversation with our nurse leader. Um, and even though the feds are rolling back on the whole grains, the only thing uh, that we are comfortable rolling back right now as far as whole grain would be our pasta. All our breads, everything else will remain whole grain. And that's basically because A, it's healthier. Two, um, it's better for our, our students who have diabetes because they have to do it by carbs and white carbs break down, I guess, easier than the whole grain carbs. So we just feel at this point, even though there is um, a relaxation of the rules, the only thing that we would like to see is the kids eating more of the pasta, and they're not really loving the whole grain pasta, so that might be the one thing that we're ready to, that we're comfortable exactly. rolling back. Mm -hmm. And the rules came out after the bid list, so we're... <laughs> We'll still go with the 1% milk and the skim milk and that, um, those kinds of choices. But the pasta is having that, you know, the, the white or even a mix, you know, a mix of whole grain and white. Um, it, it's, we just hope that the students will enjoy it more. A lot of times they, they just don't. A lot of adults don't enjoy whole grain pasta. I have a tough time pasta. going with the whole wheat. I ate whole wheat, everything except for pasta. <laughs> You and me both. I can't. I couldn't even look at white bread, but I can't. Whole wheat spaghetti. I. I, yeah. I like that pasta. <laughs> I don't like whole wheat. Oh. So that's my report, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right. I don't see any public tonight. Um, Oh, I guess, um, yes, my friend who was <laughs> so interested in the school choice question or the one who was very interested in our first town meeting about um, special needs and the possible causes are, um, maybe we'll join us another time to talk about these things, but um, I just think it's interesting, we, you know go a whole year of our meetings and the public hearings and then a town meeting when there's a massive agenda people want to get into. In the weeds. Yeah. And I, you know, I get. You did invite him though. I did. And I, and I, you know, I understand. I mean, I'm really glad when people show up to town meeting and I think it is everybody's right to ask questions and do things. It's just kind of the right balance of what level of detail we did meet ten <laughs> to times. get into a town meeting. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Um, so, uh, but hopefully we will get more, uh, public joining us, uh, next year. Um, come on out folks. Um, and so anyway, under, uh, unfinished business, we have, um, further discussion on the school choice recommendations. Um, first is among that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Then. Um, our current kindergarten enrollment for next year is at 29 students, and so we are recommending two additional um, spots for school choice. And that's in addition to the um, siblings okay. that we've already offered. Okay. Yeah. And that gives us a reasonable buffer. Yeah, for, for move-ins over the summer. Okay. Um, and then any, is that the only one that is outstanding in terms of, but the others were locked down? Yeah, the others were locked down. Um, we, we had recommended openings in kindergarten and sixth grade. Okay. And no other grade. Okay. Um, anybody, any uh, um, applications for the 
for kindergarten. Sixth grade? Uh, none in sixth grade. Okay. I know we have a bunch for kindergarten. Yeah, a bunch in kindergarten. So. That we're waiting, waiting right now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm reading that there's, we have 27 and we're recommending two more? Uh, 29 and recommending two more. Okay. And then for the ascending fifth graders going into sixth grade, we have 31. And you're saying there are some spots open, but we don't have any applications for them? Correct. How many spots open are we looking at roughly? We were thinking of, we've talked about capping grades three through six at 20 students, mm -hmm. um, but if we suddenly had an influx of nine school choice applications, I don't think it would make sense to take all, all nine. Um, I, I think we, I, I forget what the exact number was that we recommended um, a couple months ago. I could, I could pull that up, but it was anywhere from two to four. Do you recall? Then, yeah. Going into sixth grade, you're saying if all of a you got, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think four would be safe, but you you don't want we're, you don't want to right. cut it too close because we've had we've had ten years where we've mm -hmm. had two or three kids. It's kind of fallen off my radar since we haven't had any yeah. applications mm -hmm. at all. You know, it's a put, tough year because it's the last year sixth grade here, and then they yeah. have to go to Frontier. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna have two sixth grade classes next year. Two sixth grade. Okay. Yeah, the only two grades with one homeroom are going to be fifth grade, and. Third grade. Third grade. So we have 23 second graders going up and 24 fourth graders going up? Uh, 24 fourth graders on paper right now, but I think at the start of the school year, if no new students moved into town, we would be down to around 19. Okay. And that's just with, um, we have a number of students um, from overseas okay. this year for, for a one year. Um, That'd be a pretty, that'd be yeah. a manageable. Right, segment. right. So, and so we wouldn't um, recommend any school choice yeah. openings for that grade either. Okay. Yeah, so we're looking to be around 19 students for grade five next year. Okay. And, but, and it's, it's still going to be 23 in that third grade? No. No. That will be less as well. Okay. Um, okay. We, def we have one definite student who's moving out. Okay. Um, maybe a second. Okay. Um, well, I'll make a motion to go with that plan for um, recommendation for kindergarten. Okay. Um, okay, I'll second. Discussion or more questions? And just to throw it out there, this is um, a number the current kindergarten teachers are comfortable with okay. as well through discussing it with them. Yeah. Great. All right. All in favor? All right. Come All right. And then we have another unfinished business yeah. as I scroll back. Um, uh, so the non-union salary recommendations. So I just want to bring to your attention that there is one change uh, from what we presented in May. And that is with our out of school time program. Our director came um, to Dr. Carey and requested that instead of a 2% raise, that they only receive a 1% raise this year. Um, and there were multiple reasons. Um, first of all, they did receive more than a 2% raise last year because we did have to adjust them for the increase in the minimum wage. Um, so they did, they did um, get it higher than a 2% last year. Also, our enrollment is down and the cost of our higher need students is up. And we haven't changed our rates in, uh, since I've been here for five years. So we are having a rate increase for, in the fa uh, for families next year. So she'd like to try to hold the salaries uh, stable to see what the effect of that rate change will be. Um, so when I presented these to you in May, the OST was at a 2% and now they're reflected at only a 1%. Where is that? Uh, on the bottom of the first page that says grant and revolving personnel, that all those people there are in the out-of-school pro program, starting with, the, on the left, Janet Serdico, okay. down to Mohammed Yaman. Um, oh, they are all 1%? All 1%, including the director. Okay. Okay. And so that would be in that FY 2018 increase column. It wouldn't, instead of the 
two percent. It's really one. One percent. Okay. Where, where did that recommendation come from? The director. Okay. And so basically, and otherwise, it was 2%, right, is, is what's reflected here, and there's no Correct. other changes to... No other changes. Okay. Um, I want to get a motion, and then we can discuss. discuss yeah. Uh, a motion to accept the non-union personnel Salary recommendations. I'll second. Um, so page two is the frontier one. I think we already voted on those, correct? Uh, this is the administration. So we bring them to every, every school committee votes the administration right. uh, at central office. Okay. So we already have several of these. This has already been approved by four other school committees. Okay. Sorry, your line. No, oh, but so if we said no, it just kind of blow up the whole. What would happen if we said no? I don't know. I'd have to read. Have to call the attorney. <laughs> don't be that guy. I'm just, just wondering, wondering. Just wondering. Because the uh, like with the frontier budget, air travel. I think one one town basically doesn't have power to. You right. just if if the others have, you, three have approved like. It's over. <laughs> and I think, I, but I don't know if I that's true right, on the budget. I think you might be right, Mr. Fulton, because this was the same thing when um, with the school calendar. Once one school committee voted it, it was like the rest of you had no choice, and yeah. that's why we moved it to the joint, voting it on at the joint meeting, yeah. so that you could all have discussion together about it. And there are people who feel that um, these raises here don't need to be negotiated, that they're under Dr. Carey's purview, with the exception of um, Dr. Carey, myself, and the SPED director, because we report we report to the school committees. But then, then we'd have to have all five school committees get together to vote those salaries. And just to clarify, the union personnel's increase this year is 2%? 2.5. 2.5. Oh, three six percent over three years, which is the same as what we're proposing okay. here. Yeah. It's the same that the same raises that have been negotiated by the union members, except for me. Yeah, mine's not here. Mm -hmm. Well, yours was negotiated in for all three years. I got no further questions. Anybody else? Question discussion. Um, Straightforward, and um, that was. Uh, and I assume that the director of the after school, that this is not going to presumably wouldn't recommend it if it was going to create an issue with the staff. Um, the staff was a, a, a understanding of the one percent. Increase or I, I do think she I, I'm not sure if she met with the, uh, met directly with all the staff, but I think she did meet with each of the uh, building people. Um, okay. The head person in the building, the uh, site coordinators. Okay. You don't want to create a morale issue because we're in this like you know, everybody else got two percent, but we got one percent. But it sounds like there's a particular yeah. they were unique situation. Right. We're in the Renell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So next, um, we have the two votes there under new business. Uh, so discussion on amendment to policy EEA, student transportation. Thank you. From your packets, you'll see um, our policy on student transportation. Number nine um, states that grades K to three students will not be released from the vehicle, meaning the bus, unless a parent, guardian, or designated caregiver is present. If this occurs, it, probably we should say if this does not occur, the child will be returned to school. What we would like to do is add a, another statement in there saying 
um, parent guardian or designated caregiver or sibling in grade four or higher. And the reason we like to do that is because we actually do this in practice. Um, and we want to make it very clear. Hi, Greg. Oh, I gave your whole packet over to Ben. So, we give it back. Yeah, we'll give it back. Um, let me just write this down. Okay. 650. Uh, Greg. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Uh, so the re so what we're looking at here is adding this qualifier that says and I mean or a sibling in grade four or higher because this is actually what we do in practice. It's been you know the precedent has been set. We've been doing it for years, but it's not documented that way. What we wanted to do is to put it in the policy so that it's kind of an official thing. We are essentially uh, a door-to-door -door kind of bus route. There's some places we can't get way up in the mountains, and so there's a little bus stop, and parents need to be there to get their students. But essentially, it's the older student gets off, and the younger one goes with the student to the door. And we've always been doing this, and we just would like to make it official. There's no vote this time. There is um, mm -hmm. just time to think about it. I wanted to bring it up. One, I will tell you one of the other schools, Conway, suggested that we add something. It says designated caregiver or sibling, and that's designated. The assumption would be the parent would be designating that with, you know, with parent permission. Um, that's the only other thing. I mean, I don't know how clear it says when it says designated caregiver or sibling, grades four or above. I mean, it is designated. If the parent doesn't want it to happen, the parent tells us they do not want the child to getting off the bus with the sibling. Yeah. Yeah. So. So is a designated caregiver and a sibling in grade four higher the same thing? The word designated. The caregiver, no. The caregiver would assume to be an adult. But if the parent designates a caregiver or designates a student in grades four or above to walk the younger child K to three into that's the house. That's not necessarily a sibling. Uh, we're, it, it, uh, the designated caregiver does not have right. to be a sibling. So right? But in order to get off the bus with somebody in fourth grade or older, that has, has to, to be, be a sibling. sibling. Oh, so now. We're adding designated caregiver or sibling in grade four or higher. So for us, for devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could not have a situation where a child, say, in third grade, could get off the bus with their fifth grade neighbor? No. Mm -mm. Okay. No. Uh, not no. unless the third grade parent sent a note to Mr. Barshevsky saying that they would go home to the fifth grade neighbor's home. At that which point, we do get letters, notes like that every day. At that point, that becomes a designated caregiver. Correct. Okay. The uh, parent has written, would provide right. us with written permission. Yeah. If that's something they want to do on a consistent basis, does it have to does there have to be note every single time or can they designate the times in the note? The, we, we get both. Okay. You know, so every Friday John is going home with his neighbor Joe. Yeah. You know, so And then if they're in grades K to three, there either has to be a parent or um, a guardian or a designated caregiver. Unless John and Joe, John's older brother is in fifth grade, then John and Joe can get off with John's older brother. Without any kind of note or... In this sense, yes. But if the parent doesn't want it, and they say, absolutely not, I want, I, you know, I need to be there because, you know, Jimmy's just not responsible, then we would not let it happen. It would, it would be a specific uh, request not to let that happen, and we certainly wouldn't let it happen. Okay. So it's just a discussion. Uh, so what was language? I misread the point. If this does not occur, is yeah, I think we need to. When we fix this, when we bring it back to you in the fall for a vote, I think we're going to, you we know, can clarify this. Yeah, because or, it says if this occurs, yeah. the child will be returned to school. No, yeah, they're not. You turn it around and just say that students will only be released Correct. from the vehicle to a parent, guardian, designated caregiver, or sibling if this does not occur. Right. That's how, that's how yeah. we should say. Right, child get. We should say everything in the positive. I try to be okay, positive. so child will, will be released 
only positive. Right. Thank you. I'll reword it when so when we come back in the in the fall to to vote on it, it will be in the written in the positive. Because yeah, that's just not clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Alrighty. Um, reports. Um, any committees? Any committee reports out there? Um, all right. It's the whole Barshevsky. Great. Thank you. Uh, Doug, you had touched on it at the beginning of our meeting, but on May 31st, we welcomed second daughter to our family and I'd like to thank the entire Sunderland staff and our director of curriculum Louise Law who filled in for me in my absence um, when it's and it's been this way since I arrived that when family calls everyone else steps up and helps keep the ship moving in the right direction so I appreciate um, everything that the Sunderland staff and Louise did for support and, and Lynn as well um, it made it made the two weeks home, which is very short, but uh, much less stressful, knowing that things would be perfectly fine and safe here at Sunderland. Um, Saturday, June 3rd, All States Materials Group sponsored a road race to benefit Sunderland Elementary School. There were around 150 participants um, in this, uh, what is going to be an annual event. Um, from my understanding, All States is looking to support a different organization or a charity in Sunderland each year with their road race. And um, Craig Reed, their CFO, was instrumental in organizing the entire event and all states plans to purchase a set of Chromebooks for our students. Uh, climbing wall update. Between the Fun Run and Valley Gives Day, we've raised close to $6,000 for our indoor traversing wall. Uh, installation is scheduled to begin the week of August 7th, and we have a few other um, cards up our sleeve for fundraising over the summer and reaching out to other local businesses to, to get us to the $10,000 mark, which is the cost of the entire wall. June's very busy time of the year, and we've had a bunch of events. Our Community Service Day, Sunderland in Action Day, we had our Junior Olympics. There have been field trips, sixth grade had their step up day, we had a fun run, walk and roll day, sixth grade CPR. Uh, finally, uh, tomorrow night is sixth grade graduation, um, Tuesday, June 20th at 6.30 p.m. We have our final all school sing of the year on Wednesday at 1.45. And typically our last all school sing is used to honor any retirees and our departing sixth graders. And since there are no retirees this year, um, it's gonna be solely aimed towards honoring our sixth graders who are leaving us. Um, we have Field Day, which is a uh, kind of a bunch of informal games led by our sixth grade students this coming Thursday. Um, that's in the afternoon. Um, Thursday in the morning, we had our strawberry uh, picking field trip, which was supposed to be scheduled for this morning, but due to the chance of thunderstorms, we postponed it until Thursday. So that's gonna be taking place. Last day of school is next Monday. We have our kindergarten ice cream social scheduled for Wednesday, August 23rd. And the new school year begins August 30th. Yeah. I have a couple questions. Yes. Uh, these are um, unrelated to a lot of the sun here, but I kind of direct them for you. Um, I was, I think, came from some stuff in the papers, but I was asked uh, by some parents about um, school council. Mm -hmm. If we have one, when it meets, what's we, uh, our situation? With sure. Um, we didn't have an active school council this year. We had a very active school council last year. Um, we typically meet quarterly um, throughout the year. And I know next year, um, the plan is with, with the school improvement plans, district-wide, there's gonna be similar goals um, from school to school, and then one building-based goal. Um, the community members that we've had have been very active um, in supporting um, the school in one way or another. Um, and part of that has been planning kind of behind the scenes for the 300th um, anniversary celebration coming up. So who, the school council is made up of parents and 
teachers, teachers and community members. And community members. Yes. Um, and the representative. And amazing the representative. Yes. Okay. Um, does the PTO have any involvement in helping parents get onto the school council or have a um, either a voice or some more interaction mm -hmm. into it? There's there's typically a vote um, where folks can submit their names and then through a PTO meeting, um, that's where we'd have the vote to approve um, someone who's applied. And then if I, if, or if we get approached about people with interest to school council, we should direct them towards? Towards me okay. or the PTO, okay. either. You don't yeah. want to work? Yep. Okay, and then the other one was, um, do we have a guideline or policy for communicating home every time there is a lockdown or shelter in place? I don't think we have a guideline or a policy, but it's something I have done every single time. Okay. Yeah, through robo email. Okay. Yeah, and a fire drill as well. Okay. Yeah. Any, so, any disruptions to the normal school day? I've sent, you would try to I've sent robo calls home for lockdown drills, shelter in place, fire drills, and that's, well, that, that covers them. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, I don't think there's an official policy for that, um, but based on uh, a question that came up from a parent last year, because um, they said their their daughter had come home a little unnerved by the lockdown drill, mm -hmm. um, and if, if there's any way to give parents a a heads up, um, and you know we won't give heads up in advance because we kind of you know from the from the training aspect for staff. Um, but we do send a robo email home afterwards, the day of. Okay, yeah. excellent. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know because I don't get the communication home in Amherst. I get I get his stuff. Yeah, I never. I I just. And you know, I don't know. You know, there are times where they'll do a quick. Yeah. They're different than here. They're, I think they're the only backwards. So like, what's the the. the the lockdown they here do is op the, there, there's opposite. Yeah, I so their shelter, shelter in place, place is, yeah. the, is the is the lockdown. Yeah, but so their lockdown do, shelter in place. They'll do a quick one if they need to, you know, if they get a report of, of something in a locker, they'll just do a, a shelter in place. Everyone stay in the room for 15 minutes. They check a locker and that's in, and I don't know that parents need to be getting calls all the time, anytime that, you know, it's, a, it's I don't know, it's not quite as disruptive at, at the high school level and they can handle mm -hmm. it a little better. A lot of times they're half asleep and don't hear the announcement anyway, mm -hmm. so. I, the, I do know that we have to have 10 drills a year. It doesn't matter what kind, but we have to have 10, essentially one a month, mm -hmm. but sometimes we do three in April rather than taking them out in the snow in the middle of the winter. But uh, as far as notifying parents, um, and, and I commend them for you know, making sure that the parents know. It's always you know, a good policy to, to let parents know everything that's going on. And, and we've... And, and like I just said, we've done robo emails during the school day um, and not a robo call um, for the main reason that many times the robo calls are not directly answered by the individual and then they'll see a missed call from the school worrying that something's major is wrong and then we've had tons of calls at that moment. Right. I don't because want to throw more on your plate. Sure. Uh, but even instead of a robo call, almost like a robo text would be almost that way they don't miss the call and it's just a. No, but we can email. And so I, then I think the Eventually best someday. Thing, I think you're doing the great might stuff be. by yeah. emailing families. Once you get your new families. cafeteria thing, we can't use that. <laughs> I, I'll, have to, I'll have to look into that. We might, okay. we, we might be able to do a text as well. We might be able to. We. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would recommend talking to Scott Ball, yeah. our IT director. But if a robo text and email went out, that seems, mm -hmm. you what's know. Her, do you know what service we use yeah. for the robo calls? Our school, school messenger. Oh, right, right. School it's messenger. All connected to power. And, and this morning I tried, when we canceled our strawberry picking field trip, I was unable to do a robo call. I was only able to send out an email because for whatever reason yes, it wasn't working. Yes, had the same problem. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's frustrating when it does not work when you want it to. Yeah. There's no rate. <laughs> this works. It's Miller and Ellie. <laughs>
<laughs> Lip sync it. It's uh, really good. There you go. They'll never live that down. Uh, oh, that's great. Um, so, um, any other questions? Good. All right, thank you. Dr. Carey? Thank you. So speaking of communication, um, there's been a lot of that, you know, a lot of, a lot of that being asked, and um, I actually wrote this last month for my June uh, message, but I want to share it with you as well. So as superintendent, I've been asked to improve communication with families and stakeholders of the Union 38 and Frontier Regional School Districts. Since we have so many outstanding opportunities and activities happening in our district, notifying families of everything going on is essential. One of the first things I'd like to go over is our comprehensive district and school websites. The information provided on our websites is extensive in that we post all current activities and announcements daily, as well as upcoming dates of events and any updates as they happen. Uh, for instance, today uh, there was a, like a field day in one of the schools. Well, they knew it was going to rain in the afternoon, so they changed the time from 1.45 to 10.45. That went out to the parents, although they couldn't do a robocall. They had to do an email today just because of the system. But it's a great system, except today when it didn't work really well. But the parents were still notified. Um, of course, the Frontier Regional site, you know, there's a calendar that's interactive, and it, it, it displays every day. You can go for the whole school year, every day, every activity, the time, the place, everything. There's also the uh, posted is the Red Hawk School newspaper, the Red Hawk Report, uh, full of information and photos on activities that will take place. Frontier Regional is a very active school. Next year, they're hoping to televise the student-led morning news on the website as well. Um, Frontier has 24 clubs and activities, each with their own link for information. Our sports program ha also has a de dedicated link, and there are many teams playing matches and games continuously. There's an informative alumni link, a school health page with information and forms, a library media site, um, in all the research applications that students can use, the library catalog, and monthly lunch menus. Our district website, you will also find large amounts of information, including the monthly superintendent's report, upcoming events, the parent portal for Power School, our district mission and vision statements, our complete staff directory, our curriculum plan for the district, access to every school in the district, enlightening information, um, and enlightening information on our early release practice. While each school has their own website, the district also posts important district news and events on the district page. Our school committee meetings and agendas are posted. In addition, we also have FCAT that helps us by televising our meetings. And again, Frontier Regional, uh, the communication with families about grades, academics, progress in classes, is easy with the portal system in the power school. Um, contract, contacting your child's administration office is convenient as all phone numbers, emails, addresses, and other contact information is provided on the websites. Parents are able to email their child's teachers with questions about their children. I'm also encouraging the principals to use the all call system to notify all parents of important events and invite them to come. We also notify all families if there is to be a delay or a snow day. I've made every effort to do that the evening before to help families make alternative plans in a timely fashion. The union schools send home monthly newsletters to families, and some classroom and grades even have weekly newsletters to send home to families. Uh, providing schools with the information is an efficient process as well when parents want to provide us or when we need information from them. At the Union 38 Elementary School, each child brings home a back to school pack on the first day of school with emergency file form to know any changes in address, emergency contacts, email addresses, as well as the computer acceptable use form for the children to sign in and Google permission, etc. If the parents do not sign and return, the emergency file form, we send out a letter to them directly in the mail to ensure 
which should be insure. I'm going to fix that. Mm -hmm. uh, the parent has signed off telling us that our demographic information is correct. During the summer of each year, Frontier Regional, that's the regional, they send home another packet to families with schedules and all that information. I have set a goal of having at least two newspaper articles about our many and varied programs and accomplishments in the Greenfield Recorder each month, in addition to our usual sports coverage. We are trying very hard to reach our families and we continue to strive to improve. Input from families is very helpful as we think of ways outside the box to reach as many people as we can. As you can see, we do have the information out there. It may be just a case of informing families where to look. We are constantly working on ways to help familiarize families about the great things we are doing as an educational organization. We enjoy an excellent reputation as an excellent school district because our faculty and staff work diligently in meeting the needs of all the students and their families. I am proud and excited to be a part of the school district and will work nonstop to ensure we continually improve in our efforts to reach out to the community. Thank you again for your support of our fine schools. So there is information out there and one of the things that I hadn't been on top of as my first year as a superintendent are the school council meetings. And I think that we certainly will make that a focus when we go into our administrator retreat. Uh, I like to call it, as you know, the administrator summit. <laughs> because it's two days, it's not just one. And it's not really a retreat because we're really working hard. Um, so I will, this will be moved to the front burner for me because I, I you know, I wasn't that aware. I knew that. The schools had school councils, and the only one I was really, you know, aware of because the principal was, you know, reporting that information to me was Waitley. So we really need to um, really put that on the front burner and say, you know, what are we doing? What, you know, what's the agenda? So that parents don't feel that they, they don't have that avenue. And, uh, but we work every year to get better and better at what we're doing. And as you know, I'm working harder to inform the school committee um, of all the complexity of running five school districts and everything I'm doing and meeting and all the help Patty gives me and meeting with uh, Scott Paul and Bob Lesko and it's just a variety of things we're trying to do all the time. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll, this is on the website. I need to fix that insure. Insure is when you're talking about uh, protection with money, ensure is the other one, and I wrote it so fast. I it's also a drink to supplement your dietary That's right, <laughs> it's to supplement <laughs> your dietary needs. So, this covers a lot, Sorry, but I think um, what a lot of parents were getting vocal about is they want to know before major changes happen, mm -hmm. like when they're just sort of in the works, like full day preschool, major curriculum changes. I think that's kind of been what I've been hearing mm -hmm. from parents. Um, this it does give uh, the website gives a lot of access to info, but not that kind of information. Like and they want to know before, not just oh, we did this. Right, and I, I think that's a really good point. Um, I will tell you this: we have principals, and they work with. So I'm here, and then I have the business manager and the elementary coordinator, secondary coordinator, early childhood coordinator, director of facilities and technology, director of technology. So the principals work a lot with director of special ed, director of early childhood, and they, they actually do this. Now 99 times out of 100, they tell me what's going on and we talk and I meet with them and I know ahead of time. <coughs> One thing that I think that we can improve on as an administrative team is getting the information out there. How are we doing it? Yeah, just preventing surprises, I think. Right, yeah. nobody likes surprises. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. I was surprised a couple of weeks ago and I was not comfortable at all. And um, uh, it, it worked, you know, it's okay, you know, and, and I was able to, you know, talk it out with the reporter. But I, I think that we need to bring in the people and, and, and have like these nights where we can you know, discuss things. However, I do want to make something very clear. When we talk about personnel, when we talk about you know, teachers and their performance or where they're moving to, or the, 
those kinds of those kinds of discussions are confidential. They're they're not meant to have a lot of input on because the law is very clear. The union, the MTA, is very clear. We don't we can't talk about specific people and what they're doing. However, when we're making program you know programmatic programmatic changes, we really you know we really do need to bring people in and. Um, to avoid that feeling that we're not, you know, thinking of them. And I, I think that it's not informing people and letting them have a say is so important. I will say it can't always go the way they want. There's reasons why we do things we do. Uh, one particular case just recently, I, when I was informed, it was about student achievement. But we didn't get a chance to really say that. It it was it was just yeah. you know. But people are hurt and they're upset, and um, I feel that. And and I think that we have all learned a lesson, and I think we'll be better because of it. And I I have heard. I I do want you to know that I've heard. So again, policy where we're going to full day. We just thought it was so wonderful. Everybody would go, yeah, yeah, you, you know, but we need to bring those parents in and we need to really have some time where we speak to people and, and talk to them one on one and really give some clear reasons that don't include personnel. But I appreciate mm -hmm. that, Maisie, because you're making a great point. And I but it's also tricky to reach people that aren't actively searching to be reached. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Sometimes people will throw the, why, why wasn't I told the thing? And if you're doing what you talked about, which is trying to get an article or two into the uh, Greenfield Recorder all the time, at least people have an opportunity and you can say, well, you know, we are reaching out. Right. Uh, and I think absolutely, I love what you're talking about. And the other thing too is, uh, in addition to telling people where to find the stuff, uh, put the stuff where people are looking. Like, how many clicks does it take to find out whether today is an early release day or not? From the website, you know, just yeah. like, uh, what, what's it from? Clear. Still so, down. Early release day. Yeah, it's right in the near. On the right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing. No day, no um, school today, right across the top. There has to come a point, not pro programmatic changes, but the everyday stuff that I'm talking about here. There has to come a point where people also take responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, well, no, they didn't come up and shake me and say, this is this, but, oh, gee, I know where to find that. What's, you know, what's for lunch day? Oh, I don't have it on the refrigerator, but I know that it's on... You know, people can look if they want. They can go on Facebook. They can go on eBay. They can buy on Amazon. They can go to our web pages and say, "Oh, so this Friday is not an early release, and next Friday is that kind of thing." And we're not changing them next year, FYI. This year, I was new, and there was some kind of thinking that if there was a snow day, we wouldn't have it. The schedule's the schedule. One thing, and, and you know, this is for myself as much as anybody else, because um, you guys have a lot of meetings as it is, but you know, uh, um, I think for things like you were getting at, where if, it, if it's a, a, like a, you know, a curriculum change and you want to get out ahead of it with parents and get input because, you know, there is wisdom, the wisdom of crowds, um, you know, knowing that you're ultimately going to make a decision, but, but, um, PTO, you know, there's the double whammy of a. You might get more people out to the PTO, and they might keep coming back, <laughs> which is okay. The PTO can always use, um, and it's just a, a, you know, an existing forum within the school, you know, that some people are already going to, people know about, um, and so not to hijack a whole meeting necessarily, but to show up for the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes or whatever, and talk if there's a particular, you know issue that's that's going to be a big deal you know we kind of know it's going to be a big deal then um we can get out ahead of it and like in some ways if if we if we're knowing that like to you know remind me hey doug maybe you want to go to the pt <laughs> uh this month or or somebody else you know um and 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 talk with the folks and and, and then you know you can get that out in the backpack express and otherwise to let parents know in advance Hey, this is going to be an opportunity to talk about this. Um, 
you know, I know that that I was um, part of that in the past from the other side as a parent um, and appreciated it. Um, so I just need to. Uh, I think it's a very nuanced issue. I think uh, I know you got a lot of feedback about communication. And I did. I'd like to thank you for being self-reflective and trying to improve upon it and always trying to improve. I think the district does a good job of putting information out there. I think there's a lot of information to be found if people try. Um, I think, especially at the frontier level, there's also a difference between communication and marketing. And I think that there's an element of that that sometimes gets confused with communication. Um, this, again, I'd hear it less here, but more there. Mm -hmm. um, there's times where uh, I don't think that at this form, Ben needs to be paralyzed by community. I, I just looked at, we were supposed to do something at 1.45 in the afternoon, but we had to do about 10.45. Like, I don't personally think that you need to be calling home every step of the way if we're just gonna make a simple change like that. That's eventually that leads to paralysis. You can't do anything mm -hmm. without making the, the calls home. But things but are in significant. Case, some oh. parents attend. Oh yeah, I mean, Right, but there, there's nuance to it. Right, yeah. And I, I think just from from my own seat, that's just, there, there's so much information yeah. out there and w w what and when should be presented to parents. And it's it's a constant discussion, right. you know. And then on the other side, place. I like the fact that we're talking about the school council because I think that, it's, that that's where the rubber meets the road. So parents do want information. I think it's incumbent upon them as well, not to just sit home and expect us to like, Mm -hmm. try to knock on their bang down the door there's pto meetings there's school committee meetings mm -hmm. that i never see people at there's school councils so there's plenty of opportunities for parents to become involved and to get that information sure. so it's a shared burden we have to reach out to them but they have to follow through on their responsibilities and, as well. and the information shared at school council meetings is the exact same information shared at pto and school committee there's there's really right. not I mean, the updates are the same. And yeah. I would also yeah. like to point out, when we made the change to full day pre-K, we talked about it here before we did anything, mm -hmm. and it was televised. So people were surprised, but... It's been talked about in school committee, for sure, for over a couple of years, for multiple years. I mean, going back to early on in my tenure on school committee. So. But, but that's, that is different. I mean, there's a, I, just, there's a balance. We like to think there's, that there's, there's thousands of people watching us out there on the but TV the right now. But the pre-K, that was at parents' request. We would have, every year, parents would say, yeah, yeah, we yeah. need a full-day program. We need a full-day program. We can't send, we, we, we can't do a half-day program. So, I mean... Did yeah. people upset about a full day program? Well, Our kids went to preschool outside of <laughs> Sunderland because there wasn't a pre day full day program. Right. No question. And, and I think if we're just cognizant of the, the different ways we are able to communicate with family, whether it's a robo email, call, text, um, flyer and backpack website, just trying to be mindful that we hit each of those mm -hmm. avenues, not necessarily every single time, right. um, but just we know that there's different ways to get information out there. Um, so the better. ultimately, yeah. I'd like to thank both of you that, that that has come up as an issue this year, and I think that both of you have taken steps to address it. Thank you so much, and we will continue because we're all evolving and learning. I really don't know what my predecessor did, but I'm really trying to, to get out there. I go to all the activities. I'll be here tomorrow night. I spend a lot of time in Conway. Uh, they have just a wonderful, tremendous um, uh, school program and then of course we had the Saturday morning school uh, committee meeting in the one room schoolhouse which you'll know about but I also learned a lot from their program that I think I was talking to Doug and Maisie that I'd like to share with Ben and his team about what we can do as a school to um, you know to really pull in the school and the community together for the 300th mm -hmm. i think there's some great yeah. stuff about the Sunderland history of mm -hmm. sunderland mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I, i'm just learning and growing and and you know just getting into the job and again I, I really didn't know about school councils and i feel really like i was a step behind and it showed oh well <laughs> i'm sorry but i will get better every uh, every day i get i learn something new Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, well, two things. You're vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what, that's what happens if you're not here <laughs> for the we beginning. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Good. Awesome. Um, congrats. And uh, um, 
second before I adjourn it. Um, just like um, on that note about the communication, um, just uh, you know, remind each other, remind me going into next year. Um, you know, it's going to be we got some budgetary challenges ahead of us, um, and uh, I, you know, I'd like to try to pull in as much of this town as possible to help us think about that and um, you know and, and how we can go forward without hurting you know the school and um, the kids and uh, so um, and, and get you know you know come into the year uh, doing that and um, so um, just putting that out there. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, if it's, if it's August or whatever and, and, uh, or late August or something, and I am not already reaching out and saying, all right, folks, let's get our thinking ha caps on in terms of, you know, um, what we can do both in and outside of our meetings, um, you know, going through that year so that, you know, so that we can put, you know, put forward something you know, really positive as we get into budget season um, and so on, then, you know, give me a little kick and say, hey, shouldn't we be doing this? <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, that said, I wish everybody a great summer um, and uh, look forward to seeing everyone, uh, you know, around town during the summer, then in September. And, and uh, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Thank you. All in favor? Just barely in this.